what the Australians are looking for, just keeping that even. And one boundary will do all the trick here for the Australians. What's in their favour is this wicket that's coming through pretty well, but the shorties boundaries too around the ground straight on, square of the wicket. Pretty hard to protect when you're bowling. And a real buzz around the ground as we come up to the last ball of the penultimate over. Faces which don't seem all that optimistic. Well, they're pretty concerned faces, aren't they? Just a few hours ago, they were all smiles and all cheers, as you would be. It's amazing how quick it changes. Take the run and be satisfied with the run. I don't know where the crowd's coming onto the field. They think the match is over. There's no question that it isn't. There's a, a real invasion of the ground here now. And they've snatched the stumps out of the ground. They've gone away with them. There's a lad who's got one moving across towards the boundary. There's another one who snatched a, a stump. And this is absolute chaos here. The security forces were not prepared for this in any way. In fact, they were in front of the members' pavilion. The stumps have gone. It's getting dark here already at border. They invaded the ground thinking the match was over. It wasn't. And the security forces kept absolutely unawares. One of the stumps has been retrieved. There are no stumps done at this end. Two have been retrieved, and I think they've got all three now. Well, this isn't doing the Australian batsman any uh, favours either, Tony, because the light out there is failing at the moment. It looks good on your screen there because the cameras pick up extra light, but it is getting rather dark. It just upsets the concentration as well. Steve War will be fired up. Well, Keith Arthur, and he's got the burden on his hands. Six runs to win off the last over. And Keith Arthurdon, who just had the one over previously for eight runs, has to bowl it. The West Indies handicapped by the injury to Phil Simmons, which forced him off the field after he had bowled four overs. Now, everything is settled, if not quiet. And here's the last over. Six needed for Australia. Return comes to the bowler's end, and he drops it. Hard return, high to the left. Sherwin Campbell and Stuart Williams running towards the ball. Williams finally picking it up. And a fa fast return, but wide. And his fellow inhibition couldn't pull it in. Well, one good return would have been a couple of metres short there. And that's what pressure does. Put it on the fielder, and the fielder crumbled. Still four runs required. Four balls to bowl. Tension mounts. Four runs of three balls. Tension etched on the face of Jimmy Adams, captain in the West Indies for the first time today. Absolute sensation. Now the faces are smiling. Now there's optimism. Well, that one was there for the picking. There is a man there, about 45, but just get a bat on that. That runs away for four. So the nerves telling all around. And pressure right back on the batsman here, Steve Wall. Just regrouping himself. Two balls remain. Four to win. Four balls, 
four runs off the last ball. This is a sensational last over from Keith Arthurton. The crowds besides itself. Well, Steve Ball can't believe it. It's getting annoyed with himself. Frustration coming here. One delivery. Courtney Walsh comes up to lend his experience as we watch Steve Waugh trying to bang a ball through the onside. Ridley Jacobs very alert. Courtney Walsh, who's been through so many one internationals, led the West Indies with success, has come up from his position at short fine leg to have a word with Jimmy Adams. The keeper has gone back, Ridley Jacobs. There's tension all around the ground. The police now begin to do what they should have done an over a go and start to encircle the ground. In the meantime, Jimmy Adams is only, have, only has one thing on his mind, preventing Australia from getting a boundary of this last ball. It is becoming darker and darker. We're waiting for the last ball of this quite remarkable match. Steve Waugh needs to hit it for at least four. Keith Arthurton needs to pin him down to less than that. Everything hinges on this. The series is level at two all. Here's the last ball. In the air, he doesn't get it. They've gone for one, they'll come for two. There's an invasion and the return comes in. Madness here at border. Absolute chaos. Someone's gonna get injured out there. They're harassing the players. This is dangerous now for the players in the middle. Somebody snatched a bat. The police are out there surrounding Steve Waugh. He's been jostled and pushed. He's in the middle. Merv Dillon is out there with him. This is absolute chaos. It has happened over and over and over here in the Caribbean. Nothing has been done about it, and it's happened here again. One of these days, a player is going to get seriously injured in the melee. It happened before, just an over before. The warnings were there. Absolutely nothing done to control the crowd in their excitement. In the meantime, the West Indies have won an extraordinary match by one run. Four runs needed off the last ball, but who is to say what the match referee Raman Sabaro will determine this time? Let's have a look at the Australian wickets. Leaf side in the air and out. Jimmy Adams takes the catch and Mr. War, you are out. And Tom Moody goes cheaply again. And what an amazing day's cricket. It started three and a half hours late at the game. It started at one o'clock, 30 overs each side. And we thought we were in for a meandering game of cricket towards the end. But what an amazing last over. And we don't know the result. It's nearly an hour since the last ball was bowled. And with me, the match referee, Raman Saburo. Raman, an amazing day. Before we get to it, what is the actual result of the match? Well, we've decided now that the match has been tied. The, uh, the two sides tied the match and therefore they'll go to Barbados on Saturday and Sunday, uh, all, all square. It was a chaotic finish, as, uh, as I think everyone will have seen. Well, talking about the cha chaotic finish, we'll take you through the last ball. With one ball to go, Australia needed two to uh, three to tie and four to win. Take us through the last delivery, Raman. The, uh, the last delivery was, was pulled away to, into the mid-wicket area. Uh, not desperately quickly and they ran uh, one and then they turned and ran the second one uh, a third really would have been very difficult but as you can see Steve is fighting his way uh, down the wicket to get the third with all those um, people around him the situation had become really quite quite impossible but they had the third run and that's something that actually influenced me considerably and the other thing of course Raman is that Keith Arthur and went to take the stumps out of the ground but there was no stumps there they were already out of the ground <laughs> well on their way to somewhere in Georgetown 
they'd already disappeared at the, the speed of light, yes. It's a great shame when we get situations like that, but if they do happen, I believe that the cricket has got to be the winner, and uh, we can't go off with any rancour that such and such a thing might have happened or might not have happened. I think when you get chaos like that, I think you've got to make sure that, uh, that common sense prevails, and I personally think that a tie is the, is the right answer. Raman, you met with the two captains, the managers and everybody else involved out in the middle. Uh, what was the feeling at the end of your decision? The, uh, the captains and the managers on both sides, they all shook hands and said, you know, well done, well played. I mean, they know what a circus it was at the, at the finish. And I don't think anybody really wants to win a game like that. I don't think there are many West Indians who would want to win a game under those circumstances. But they were very gracious in the end. And uh, Clive uh, Lloyd and, and Jimmy Adams in his, in his first game as captain, I think, they both shook hands very, in a very friendly way. So I was pleased at that. Well, Raman Sabaro, the match referee, explaining what's happening, there, what's happening there. It was an interesting game because 30 overs aside and Australia restricted the West Indies to 173 for five. And then with six balls to go, one over remaining, the West Indies, you thought they'd done their sums incorrectly because Phil Simmons had gone from the ground injured and Keith Arthurton had to bowl the last over to Steve Orr. Australia needing six. Steve Orr hit the first ball for two and could not score off the next four and then needed that.